Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The words of scripture for us to consider today are the gospel found in John chapter 1 verses 35 through 42. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, we have this Sunday that we are going to recognize Andrew the Apostle, or Saint Andrew, and in the Bible, Andrew's name is only found 13 times. Uh, two of them are found in this scripture lesson. We don't have a whole lot of information about him because of those 13 appearances, about four or five of them are just Andrew in a list with the other disciples. Here is the most extensive amount of information that we find in John chapter 1, having to do with Andrew the Apostle. We read from John 1, verses 35 through 42. Now, the next day, John was standing there again with two of his disciples. When John saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned around and saw them following him, he asked, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you standing? He told them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying. They stayed with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his own brother Simon and say to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Looking at him, Jesus said, You are Simon, son of Jonah. You will be called Cephas, which means Peter. This is the gospel of our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, uh, before I and we together dig into these words of Andrew finding out about Jesus and following him. I'm going to take a little bit of a side. There will be a connection to Andrew. We'll see in a moment. I want you to take a moment and just think about the last time you shared something. Maybe like me, you shared a piece of pumpkin pie at a Thanksgiving meal recently. I didn't make my own pie. I, I bought it at the store and brought it to share. My wife shared the sweet potato casserole that she whipped together. Uh, much more effort put in by her than I put in myself. You probably shared something at a gathering of family and friends on, on Thanksgiving. That's all good. But better than the sharing of food is something else that occurred actually a week ago. A week ago today, my great-nephew, born to my, ne my niece and her husband, uh, my great-nephew was baptized, little Nico. Important and good news to share because now he is a member of God's family. Heaven is waiting for him. And while it doesn't add more value to the baptism, a neat thing is that my father, great-grandfather of Nico, did the baptism. And my brother grandfather of Nico, preached the sermon at the church uh, where Nico was baptized that day. That's an important thing to share, but even more so than sharing a pumpkin pie. That a loved member of the family became a member of God's family, too. Well, Andrew is known as a sharer, Andrew the Apostle. He shared, as I mentioned when we heard about the song today, God opening his hands and satisfying the desires of every living thing. Andrew was the apostle who, who found the young man on the mountainside in the country when Jesus fed 5,000. Uh, Andrew found the young man with the loaves and the fish, and Jesus multiplied them, providing for the needs of everybody assembled there. Andrew was a sharer. But the sharing that Andrew did in our scripture lesson for today was even more important than feeding people's bellies. 
so that they were satisfied and full. He shared the Lamb of God. And maybe it's too simple a theme for the sermon today. You'll see it printed in the bulletin. But if it's simple, you might remember it. If you're like Andrew, share the Lamb of God. Follow his example. Well, Andrew was one of the disciples mentioned at the beginning of the text. It takes later in the text to, uh, to have his name revealed. But the next day, our text begins. Well, if it begins like that, we should look at what happened the day before, shouldn't we? That was John. John the Baptist, again, is there. And he had his disciples who were following him. And when Jesus came to be baptized, John the Baptist said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He made a connection between Jesus and that Passover lamb. That Passover lamb who allowed the angel of death to pass over the houses of the Israelites. The one who brought life. The one that was a picture of a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Throughout the Old Testament, done every year in a poignant way. That Lamb of God was fulfilled when Christ Jesus came. That is what John the Baptist referred to in these words. John said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's so needed because sinner is something that's stamped all over our DNA. It's who we are. It's how we were born. We don't have a right to enter God's eternal security, God's presence as sinners. While we were born with sin, we also have those selfish thoughts and those actions who are, that are unkind. Someone must take away our sins if we are to be with God. Martin Luther wrote that there are really only two places where our sin can be. Our sin can be on the sinner, or it can be on Christ. The law placed sin on you and me. But the gospel, through the Lamb of God, placed our sins on Christ. He took those sins, all of them, away. John's message shared that. But John's message to the disciples who were following him, was more than that on the day before our text. He also said, this is the one I meant when I said, the one who comes after me has surpassed me because he is greater than me. John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus, and so we understand that Jesus was younger than John the Baptist by birth date. But Jesus had existed before eternity as the second person of the Godhead, of the Holy Trinity, Jesus existed before John and was also greater than John the Baptist. So great that John said, I have seen and testify that he is the Son of God. He heard the words from the Heavenly Father, this is my Son, whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. He saw the dove land on him as the anointed one to be the world's Savior. Andrew and the other disciple that we would recognized as John, the gospel writer, well, they would come to know Jesus, believing and confessing the truth that Jesus is the Son of God, the world's Savior. You, you are all here today because someone has shared the Lamb of God with you, just as John the Baptist shared it with Andrew and the other disciple, John. Maybe it was years ago when you were an infant, or a child, as parents or loved ones brought you to God's font, to baptism, where you brought into God's family, or you heard the truth about Jesus' love. Maybe it was more recent when a family member or your pastor or a friend connected you to Jesus by telling you God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You Believe this because someone shared it with you. God brought you to faith. In the guilt remover, Jesus is the one about whom we know God made him who had no sin to be sin for us 
so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus was like other people in every way, except one, he didn't have any sin. And that's why John could identify him the day before and then the day of our text as the Lamb of God. The atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Andrew and the other disciple, John, followed Jesus. And the good news of Jesus drew them in. I love this little conversation. It doesn't have to get really deep at the start that Jesus has with Andrew and John. But when Jesus turned around and saw them following him, he asked, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He told them, Come and you will see. They were looking for the one who removes sin based on John's word, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The whole message that Jesus shared is not condensed into this small section of Scripture, but it's found throughout the gospel lessons of Jesus' life. But he shared that love. He explained to some degree that the disciples were ready to who he was, and the two disciples followed Jesus. They stayed with him that day. It was so poignant that John the Apostle, John the Gospel writer, actually remembered the time of day that this happened. It was about the 10th hour, 4 p.m. You see, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, was hospitable enough to take time for his disciples and be interested in them and allow them to follow them, which is really what they were indicating they wanted. When Jesus says, what do you want? And they said, teacher, where are you saying? They put themselves under him, saying, we'd like to learn from you. Can we spend time with you? And Jesus was happy to oblige. There's no one it's easier to spend time with than Jesus. He's always got time for you as he comes to you in the word. It comes to you when you read it or when someone speaks it to you. That message of truth about God's love for you. Those blessings were valuable enough for John the Baptist to share them with Andrew, the apostle. And a chain reaction occurs. A chain of events follows with sharing this lamb of God. As these men hear about the Savior, Andrew especially, we hear, passes him on. We read in verses 40 and 40 to 42. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John and then followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his own brother, Simon, and say to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. He brought him to Jesus. You see, John the Baptist's testimony and Jesus' words were enough to convince Andrew and John, the Gospel writer, that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ which means the anointed one to fulfill God's plan of salvation. It was a special thing, important for Andrew, more important than sharing the loaves and the fish to fill up the bellies, more important than sharing pumpkin pie. He went to his brother, found him, and had to share this great news. We have found the Messiah. This is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Lord's anointed, who would, who would fulfill the fulfillment, who would fulfill the prophecies of forgiveness and payment for sin. And this wonderful truth is not something that we hoard and keep to ourselves, but it is shared as Andrew shared it with his brother. Can you be an Andrew and share this wonderful truth with your brother, your sister, your, your family, your friends. It happened by an identification of Jesus. And it was done repeatedly. John the Baptist did it two days in a row and repeated it throughout that day. Andrew repeated that message to his brother. Repetition is key as we share God's love in Jesus with others as we are Andrews. We recognize the repetition is used so not only does God show himself to people, to us, God shows himself through us to others. 
And as we talk about Andrew the Apostle today, we're going to get down and apply it with some individual, very personal thoughts you can have. But let's look at that final paragraph, or even final sentence in the text. Okay. Did you think the comment, since we're talking about Andrew the Apostle, did you think the comment about Peter was really inapplicable? Looking at Peter, Jesus said, You are Simon, son of Jonah. You will be called Cephas, which means Peter. Are you thinking to yourself that, Pastor, you could have cut out the second half of verse 42 to make the text complete and let us focus only on Andrew. You didn't have to tell us this thing about Simon being renamed Cephas or, or Peter, but it's applicable to Peter, to Andrew's life too, not just Peter's. How is it applicable? Well, you know Peter's name is found much more than the 13 times that Andrew's name occurs in the New Testament. We learn so much from Peter about faith, uh, by Peter's great accomplishments, and about faith and forgiveness by Peter's great failures as well, don't we? What a great thing that God included Andrew who is lesser known than his brother, so that Andrew could bring Peter to Jesus. And Peter could believe. Uh, it's hypothetical. Um, and it was God's plan that Andrew bring Peter. But hypothetically, how much would have been lost if Andrew had not been Andrew? If Andrew had not shared Jesus with his brother? But what a great blessing for us that Andrew shared. What great things will you bring about by being an Andrew to tell your friends and family? And maybe their church uh, fame, their ability to witness the things they do uh, and give to a church and to do in God's, for God's glory might surpass the things you do. Uh, but friends, there's not a sibling rivalry. It wasn't between Peter and Andrew. Not when it came to being followers of Jesus. And if you tell someone about Jesus and they gain more notoriety than you in Christianity, you don't have to be jealous. I don't have to be jealous that a young man that I took through catechism class eventually becomes a world missionary and is more known in God's church than I am. I just praise God that my catechism student heard the message. And I praise God that more people are knowing the Lamb of God through His work as well. And so as you think about being an Andrew, take a moment. Take a moment, and this is what I talk, referred to at the beginning of the service. Pull out those connection cards and, and grab a pen. And think about the name of someone who needs to hear about Jesus. You don't have to write a last name. Write that first name. If you want to write the last name, you can. And again, no, write the last name. Write, write the name. Uh, yeah, I'll give you seven seconds to do it. Know as you write that name that I will pray for you and your friend or family member this week. And then, remember who that person was. Remember that person's name. And take time this week to make time for them to try to share Jesus. To be an Andrew to them. Maybe you're asking yourself, Pastor, how can I be an Andrew and tell someone, we have found the Messiah. Well, you don't have to use the word Messiah or even Christ. How can you share with someone, we have found the guilt remover. We have the, found the one who gives us peace with our maker. You might use those words, maybe. There's nothing wrong with that. That can work. Or you can follow the example of a pastor friend of mine who shared the words that he goes to the barber and always when he goes to the barber or when you go to the hairstylist, you can take 
a Jesus book, he called them. Something obvious that talks about God's love on the cover. Maybe even a picture of a cross or some picture of Jesus on the cover. And read it while you're getting your hair cut or styled. And then, at a quiet time in that situation, my friend would close the book with his finger in the page he had just read and sigh. Hmm. A contented sigh. And inevitably, his barber, and he would go to a different one sometimes, would say, what? Uh, what's going on? And you could share what made him sigh in that wonderful passage about Jesus and God's love that he just read. Maybe that would work for you. Or maybe, as you're golfing with your friends this week and your score is a lot worse than you wanted it to be, or you lost a, another, uh, lost that bridge again, or, or lost the shuffleboard tournament, you can make a comment to your dear friends. Rather than complaining about losing, just be grateful that you are a winner in heaven because of what Jesus did. You get the idea. Can you take examples like that and bring them into your own life so that you can be Andrew to your family and friends in your daily life? If you want to run some ideas past me, give me a phone call or set up an appointment, I'd be happy to do that. If you want to just tell me what you did, whether it worked or not, I'd be happy to hear you. Just know that I will be praying for you in that effort to be an Andrew. That introductory comment is important, but how do you follow it up? What do you say after those leading statements? Well, that's why you attend Bible study. That's why you're going to be back in church to hear another sermon next week about Advent and, and Christ's coming. You'll learn more things that you might be able to say. It's why you read the Bible on your own. And it takes practice. Practice, and maybe you find a way by practicing to improve the way you share the Lamb of God. But in all of this, I also recall a, a, another opportunity I had to share Jesus with a co-worker who didn't believe in God. He told me that, uh, and this is when I was working my way through college. I came back and told, told my friend, I just don't know how to share Jesus with this man from work who doesn't believe in God. And my friend said, don't wait. Just try. Say something. Do you realize that if you try to share Jesus and, and he doesn't believe in Jesus right now, even if you mess it up badly and he continues to reject Jesus, even if you mess up badly in your, in your words and stutter and aren't really coherent, your friend won't be any worse off eternally than he is right now. You can't send, because you say something, it doesn't mean he's going to go to a worse place than hell. Right? Even if he rejects your kind, loving words, you're not making the situation any worse. You can only improve it by sharing the Lamb of God. We pray that your efforts are successful. One more thing that we note, and we might find it difficult to share sometimes, it may not be difficult for me to share pumpkin pie, I don't mind that, but if there's only one piece of pecan pie left, it's kind of difficult to share. Because then you've got to cut it in half, and you only get half as much. It doesn't work that way when you share the Lamb of God. When you share Jesus, God's measure of blessing is endless. And it overflows in abundance upon abundance, overflowing with a filled measure, abounding in blessing from God. When you share Jesus with others, you don't get less love. You just multiply the number of recipients. Dear friends, share the Lamb of God. Be an Andrew. May God bless you in this goal. Amen.